So, how I met Janice. Uh, it's actually a pretty funny story. So, I was living in North Carolina driving a late model for Joe Gibbs Racing and had some success the first year I ran a late model for them. Joe Gibbs Racing sent me to this combine along with I think maybe six or seven other drivers. I went to Caraway Speedway and did the test and Randy, my now father-in-law, uh, was the crew chief for this truck. And so fast forward, I find out I got the opportunity and when I showed up at the airport to fly to the test at Memphis, there was this hot blonde uh, at the gate too. And of course it caught my eye and she was standing with the team. So we get on the plane, we fly to Memphis and get off with the team. And I quickly put together that it was the crew chief's daughter because she got in a rental car with him and, and rode to the hotel and checked in with him we were at the test and while I was working with him trying to make the race car faster, while they would make changes to the truck, I would go over and talk to Janice and ask her like, hey, how's the other trucks running? How's our lap times? And try and make small talk just to, just to get her to, to open up. Um, and she was, she was tough, man. She would just be like, uh, you're like two tenths off the sets here in the morning. <laughs> and I didn't really, like, I, I remember him walking up because I knew all the guys on my dad's team. And I was sitting at the terminal and I remember him walking up and like he starts chatting with the guys and I'm like, who's the new guy? Like I'm thinking he's like a new tire guy or something. Like, who's the new guy? Oh, he's our driver. Oh, okay. And like didn't think anything of it. Totally, just, ah, whatever. We loaded up and, and went back to the airport to fly home from Memphis to Charlotte. And I guess fate her seat was right next to my seat. We sat next to each other on the flight home. And for two hours flying home from Memphis to Charlotte, uh, she talked my ear off. You say I talked your ear off. Yeah. You didn't ignore me. Correct? I did like not. You didn't want to not talk. No, I was totally prepared when I got on the plane and I sat next to her to be fully committed to have as much conversation as she was willing to have. But then I knew that was back like when the iPod had just come out. And so like I had my iPod and it had all hundred songs on it. And I was ready to listen to music if she wasn't gonna have any of it. And I never never put my earbuds in. I, we sat and talked the whole flight home. Go over to Randy's house and study uh, old notes that he had. And then I would leave their house. And as soon as I would leave their house, I would call Janice and say, hey, do you want to meet up for a drink or go grab dinner? He would come over and watch film with my dad. And then he would leave. And then he would call me. And I'm like, you know I live at home. You know that I'm home. Why didn't you just ask me? He's like, I don't want to ask you in front of your mom and dad. I'm like, well, out of respect, I still tell my mom and dad, like, hey, I'm leaving, I'm going with so-and-so. I just knew that if I if I made Randy mad or did something wrong, that he was going to leave the right front tie rod loose at Texas. I think mom was harder to win over with Eric. Yes, I knew She'll from the get-go. I know, she would. She would turn so red and be so embarrassed. But I knew from the get-go, like, her mom was not impressed. Um, the very first race we went to was Memphis, Memphis. and it was like 108 degrees. It was the hottest like day. The it was like the hottest the day hottest on planet day. Earth. I'm trying to get prepared for my first ever truck race. Like this is my debut. Like this is a big deal for me. And I cannot escape the heat. Like our hauler is... There's guys laying th on the Yeah, there's ground. guys laying on so the ground hot. in our hauler because they're so hot. The inside of our hauler is 96 degrees, 100 degrees. In Memphis. In Memphis. And so I made a grumpy comment like, geez, oh, Pete's like, I'm already sweaty and the race hadn't even started yet. So yeah, personally. She took it, it was personal. Her, like, she was she so was, pissed. She, she was, was like, she was like, what, is our hauler not good enough for you? <laughs> I then slow played it from there <laughs> for what, probably another five or six years. So I asked you to marry me. Um, I would have asked her to marry me way sooner, but I felt like my life was com a complete mess. I had, uh, I was in a ride, out of a ride, in a ride, out of a ride. They have a house down in Florida, and so we left North Carolina and went down to Florida, and I was spending some time with them, and we needed to go get gas for their boat. And so I rode with Randy um, to the gas station, and we, uh, we got out and filled up the gas jugs for gas for the boat. And I said, hey, I just want you to know, like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, 
playing your daughter along or anything like I love your daughter tremendously and I'm gonna marry her one day I was like I just have to get like a few more pieces of the puzzle together I don't want to bring her into the situation I have like I feel like it's not right to do to her and stuff and he said all he said to me was Tim for bud good luck <laughs> <laughs> you're later a year later about six months six or seven months later I went and bought a ring um, and then a couple months after that I asked, oh, her, I asked her to marry. You were gonna do it, you said, later, like around the holidays. Yeah. And he was racing in Texas. Papa and Gigi were in Texas racing. And I'd gotten something in the mail from the jewelry exchange. Oh, uh, that's right. And it wasn't like a flyer, it wasn't, it was like an envelope. And I'm like, what? So I talked to him that night. I'm like, you got something in the mail from the jewelry exchange. Like, I'm like, yeah. what did you get in the mail from the jewelry exchange? And he's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't open it. Don't open it. Just, just, I don't know. I'll get it when I get home. Okay. I thought it was the appraisal because I was working on trying to get insurance on the engagement ring I just bought her. So I thought that they mailed the appraisal to the <laughs> engagement <laughs> ring to our house. I'm just going to do it. Well, you asked so I went, you I went, to talk to Papa yeah. before the truck race. I went and found him. I was Texas, like, hey, I'm, when they, I get home from here from Texas, I'm going to ask Janice to marry me. And he's like, all right, good. And so then I called Vicky and told her the same. I was like, hey, I'm going to. And then I called and told my parents. And then when I got home, I literally walked off the plane, walked in the house, went to the dresser drawer where I had the ring hidden, got it, and went and asked her, asked her to marry me. In the bathroom. Like standing in the middle of the bathroom. Yeah. Nothing, nothing romantic, like romantic, no flowers, no nothing. Nothing no, planned out. No. I don't even know if you got down on one knee. Yeah, I did. I got down on one knee and I said, I know this is awkward, but I'm gonna marry you. And I said, I know this is awkward, but I'm gonna marry you. I don't know. Yeah. I said, I know this is awkward, but I'm gonna marry you. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, that's the story. We had fun. It all worked out. I was, I was lucky enough to have all of it work out for me. I got awesome trucks, and he helped me make a name for myself and got me recognized that I ran as well as I did in those truck races. And that honestly propelled me into getting more opportunity, um, and I got the girl. <laughs> I